From Studio B in the Communication Building at Olivet Nazarene University, it's Tonight at Olivet with Adam Keller. Tonight's guests include Olivet's new Associate Chaplain, Antonio Marshall, and the Director of Little Women, Molly Perry. Here's your host, Adam Keller. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our second episode of this season of Tonight at Olivet. I'm your host, Adam Keller, and we have a great show lined up for you tonight. Uh, I really appreciate you all tuning in, especially with all of the other entertainment options that we have right now. I mean, there have been a lot of new movies that have hit theaters recently. From the new Marvel movie, The Eternals, to the newest addition to Wes Anderson's list of films, The French Dispatch. There are so many options, so I am really, really glad that you are watching this. Uh, it was a great week for Timothy Chalamet. Between The Fringe Dispatch and Dune, I mean, it, Dune, it, it's a fantastic sci-fi story that has incredible visuals and a masterful story. It's truly an epic of our time. Besides everyone's favorite man who looks like a sickly little Victorian girl, Timothy, this incredible cast <laughs> includes Thanos, Drax the Destroyer, Aquaman, Poe Dameron, the lady from Mission Impossible, Bill from, Mich uh, from Mamma Mia, the guy from Eat, Pray, Love, and Zendaya. <laughs> Oh, and uh, I don't know if you've seen or heard about this, but after years of battling her record label for the rights to her songs, Taylor Swift is re-recording and re-releasing her hit album, Red. That's right, Red, Taylor's version, comes out this Friday, November 12th. The, this re-release will include all of her uh, original versions of the songs, plus some new songs, as well as a 10-minute version of the song, All Too Well. I know that I'm really excited to hear the rest of the tea from, that was cut from the four minute version, and I think Jake Gyllenhaal is really excited as well. But uh, I, I, I could be wrong on that one. And I think this is great, doing all of these Taylor's versions, and I think this is, I've been really inspired. So much so that I've actually decided to do my own list of Adam's versions of a bunch of different Starbucks drinks. Make sure to be on the lookout for the new flat white Adam's version. <laughs> the brown sugar shake and espresso Adam's version. <laughs> The white chocolate mocha, Adam's version, and the new pumpkin cream cold brew, Adam's version. <laughs> and speaking of Starbucks, this past Thursday, the Starbucks on campus released the new holiday cups. It's still the same $5 cup of coffee that everyone and their mom is willing to wait half an hour for, but now um, it's prettier. <laughs> On the subject of holidays, Halloween has just passed us by, and this brings us back to the great debate that comes back every single year. When is it appropriate to start playing Christmas music? Is it acceptable on November 1st, or do you have to wait until after Thanksgiving? See, personally, I think that you need to... But that's just me. One person that I talked to said that you have to wait until after Thanksgiving. And if you don't, then you're just skipping over Thanksgiving entirely and not giving it enough credit. And that got me thinking. Are there any other holidays that are just overlooked and forgotten? I had some of our researchers look into this for me, and they came back with quite the list. Here are a few of them. On January 21st, we celebrate National Squirrel Day. We get there every day, we see them every day on campus, and they deserve a day to be appreciated as well. And on January 12th, we celebrate National Kiss a Ginger Day. So find your favorite redhead and bring them close so you can have a nice, not now, go get out. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry about that. And finally, the first day of May, we celebrate No Pants Day. If you would like to go back to the way things were when all you had to do was dress appropriately from the waist up for all of the Zoom calls during COVID lockdown, then I think you'll really enjoy this day. <laughs> We've got a great show lined up for you tonight. Tonight, we have special guest Associate Chaplain Antonio Marshall. And later, you won't want to miss Molly Peary, director of Own News production of Little Women. So stick around. All right, welcome back everyone. Our first guest is a new face around campus for many students, but he has quite a long history with Olivet. Antonio Marshall is the newly, newly appointed associate chaplain, and he is deeply passionate about the, this next generation of students. So please welcome Antonio Marshall. Hello, sir. How are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great, I'm so good. glad that you're here with us. So, as I said, you're a rather new face for a lot of students, but yeah. you have quite a long history with Olivet. Can you tell me a little bit about what brought you here and uh, what it was like while you were a student? Yeah, so as a freshman in high school, I had a friend named Jake Purcell. 
his dad and him started inviting me to come to like district events and things like that. I went to a very small Nazarene church and I went with him to a, a district celebrate life, got invited to come to regional celebrate life. In my freshman year of high school, I actually played tennis. And that was crazy because whenever I got here, um, I found out it was so much more than just tennis. Yeah. And I was like, dude, why didn't you tell me they had like a basketball team or anything like that? And so my junior and senior year, I actually came to district regional celebrate life for basketball. And it was there I got recruited, came um, really just to play basketball, didn't really care about school or anything like that. And it was just in that span of time, it was like four to five, five and a half years for me that um, God really started to do a work in my heart um, through um, our basketball chaplain, Leon Blanchett, my coach, um, other people, and my wife now, just working in my life. Um, and I acknowledge Jesus as Savior and Lord going into my senior year. Quick wow. story, actually, I got in yeah. trouble as a junior, um, and our president was actually the dean kind of of discipline at the time. So he actually... Um, punished me for getting in trouble my junior year. Oh boy. We'll, we'll, we'll keep that, we'll, we'll tell that story later. Oh cool, yeah, no, I, I'd love to hear it. Uh, I love that what brought you here was yeah. Celebrate Life. I remember when I was in high school, coming here for Celebrate Life and just, I, I knew that I was gonna come to Olivet and it just got me so excited being yeah. able to be on campus. So I love that that's, that's what brought you here. Um, so, the new associate chaplain. Yeah. What, what is that like? What is, what is that job? So I, I get to assist um, Chaplain Holcomb in setting themes and speaking and hosting chapel speakers and things of that nature. But I also get to oversee the Student Ministries Council, which is really cool. I get to um, kind of like um, be kind of a spiritual guide for the co-leaders that make up the council for the ministries of campus. And then I'll be starting discipleship groups, some in the spring, but mainly next fall. So. That's incredible. I, I, I'm so excited for the, the direction that, that this is going. Yep. Um, but while you've been figuring this out, I mean, you've been doing this for about mm -hmm. two months now. Yeah. Uh, has there been anything that surprised you about this role? You know, a lot of a lot of this um, is new for me because whenever I was a student here, I was not a believer, um, was not really entrenched in ministries or revival. And so a lot of it really is new for me, kind of very unfamiliar ground. One, I think um, just working with Mark, he really is who he's like, he really cares about neighboring and he um, is very serious about that in his own personal life. But also I think um, just kind of learning and getting to know people um, has just been interesting to new people that are around campus because it looks very different than when I was here 10 years ago. Yeah, I can imagine. That's uh, so cool to think about that just 10 years ago. Yeah. It was quite a different place. So. What is at your heart for the future of chapel and student ministries? Where, where would you like to take this? Where do you feel God's leading you? Yeah, I think, um, I think we, we think about the, the totality of the people that we have here. And we have people who've been in church their whole life. And we have people who, I mean, like, they just came to all of that and they don't necessarily believe in God or even have that relationship. I think for people on one side to really grow in their walk with God and take those next steps, but also for the young man or the young woman that is, is me, who, whenever I was on campus, yeah. that has never really encountered the love of Christ in a tangible way, that whether it be our ministries, chapel, or just classes, um, overall life at Olivet, that they would encounter Jesus in some way, shape, or form. That's so. incredible. I, I love that the the ministries here truly want to see people come to know Jesus as their yeah. Savior and yeah. know that they are cared about and loved. That, I mean, that's just so encouraging to me. Yep. So, Antonio, we understand the student ministries is very, very active on campus and reaching to the yeah. hearts of those students like we were talking about. But here at Tonight at Olivet, we felt inspired to take on some of that responsibility. Okay. We, want to, uh, we went around and asked students why they fear salvation. Let's take a look at some of the responses. Wow. Oh! 
is that? Yes, amen, hallelujah. I greatly appreciate that. Oh my God! <laughs> Thank you. Bring it in. Yeah. God bless you, and I do. on Facebook. Well, that's a good thing. That is a good thing. That is. I'm Were you trying to scare, you. scare me? No, just thankful for your faithfulness today. Oh, are you Jesus? I am the Lord. representing <laughs> him today. Got you. Yeah. All right. I understand. I'm not going to lie. I think Jesus would have a lot more drip for you. I think you are correct. Do you love me? Do you love me? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Bless you. That's a good answer. <laughs> That's a good answer. The power of me compels you. You have a blessed day today. Thank you for your faith. You are servants of the Lord. I said to my face. <laughs> And anyways, you can see our tactics here tonight about all of that. We're not as successful as we might have hoped, so I think we will just leave student ministries to uh, take care of that aspect on campus. Probably a good idea. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I definitely think that I agree with you. And uh, that brings me to what was going on in front of us. Uh, mm -hmm. Since Antonio has quite this role in leadership uh, at Olivet, we thought we might put you to the test and see how much you know about this okay. university. All right. So what is going to happen is we are going to play a trivia game about Olivet. And for every answer that we get wrong, because I'll be playing with you, yep. we have to eat a hot wing. So we have these wings here in front of us, and they're a little bit spicier. And I don't know what your spice tolerance is, but we're going to find out. So we're going to, well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> um, this game is called Burning Questions. All right, what's going to happen is we are going to read off the questions on the screen for each other, mm -hmm. for the questions, yep. and then we're going to try and answer. If we get it wrong, they'll put the answer up, and then we've got to eat a hot wing, and then we'll just okay. go back and forth for questions for each of us. Right. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's go ahead and see what this first question is. I get to go first, right? I'm going to ask yeah, you. Yeah, you're, you're okay. going to ask me. Yep, yep. What is Olivet's mission statement? Oof. Uh, I believe, I think, it is education with a Christian purpose. Mm. Let's see if I'm right. 
Hey, Correct. there we go. I am right. Come on. All right, let's uh, let's get this first question for you. All right, of the people who were nominated for Homecoming King, who was not voted to be the Homecoming King? Hmm. You were one of them. Uh, well, you're Adam. Um, <laughs> Kwame, Derek Stark. I don't know. You don't know the last one. No. You do, is that are you, final answer? You don't know. Final answer. Don't All know. right. It was Derek Kwame, Josh Wolf, and myself. <laughs> oh, so, Antonio, so close. these hot winglings look fantastic. Why don't you go ahead and take one of those? This one right here. Nice and tasty. Mm-hmm. Good. Bad. We'll see if they uh, get spicier as time goes on. All right, let's do this next question. What year was the Olivet Fire? All right, so I know that it was not too long after Olivet started. Um, was it 1927? No. Oh, it the was 1939. The answer's 1939. Gotcha. Oh, well, dang. All right. Mm. Good? It was very nice. Mine's messy. Just a little spice there. Yeah, just a little it's bit. good, though. Very good. My question. How many countries are represented on campus by students? I feel like I've heard 53. 53 countries? Let's find out. 23. Oh, oh no. You were close. <laughs> yeah, three. <laughs> uh. All right. Going with the drumsticks first? Mm hmm. Mm. Good? It's good. Yeah, I might have a little, you know, a little bite. Ooh. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, what about this next question for me? Very good. What school at ONU? does Dr. Stephen Case teach in? I hope I know this one. I had a class with him. It's the School of Science, right? Is that, is that the whole name? Is this the School of Science? Oh. Oh, that's yeah. wrong. So, no, 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 no. Is it, it's science. <laughs> I'll eat a wing. You should take a bite anyway. I will, I will. You feel better it's about fine. myself. It's good. They're good wings. They are very good wings. It's a little spicy. It's getting a little spicier. All right, on, on Fridays, what does the main meal line consistently mm. serve in Ludwig? Is it um, chicken nuggets and mac and cheese? Let's find out. It is mac and nugs. Come on. Everybody's favorite day. Yes. <laughs> mac and nugs. I right. get one right. Yeah, just one. And take a rest. What's next? Including ONU's Starbucks. Starbucks introduced, it, it introduced a new fall seasonal drink this year. What was it? I feel like this might not be fair. Fall? Or Christmas? Um, well, if it was fall, then... Did I say, did I say fall and it, it was It said Christmas? fall. I think so. Okay. Um, I don't know. I thought it was. I thought there wasn't any new ones. Uh, was it the caramel Reuben crunch frappuccino? Carmen. Oh. Oh no. The apple crisp macchiato. I've made so many of those. I should have known. All right. Cool. I thought you were gonna get that one right. I got cool. <laughs> <laughs> but here we are. All right. What's what next? Oh. Oh. <laughs> what is Dr. <laughs> Chenoweth's dog's name? I'm going to guess uh, Greg. Greg? Okay. <laughs> Named after himself. Good. Greg, is that right? But, oh, no. no it's wrong. Maple. Okay. It's similar, though. <laughs> mm. It's good. I need another napkin. This is orange. I know, right? I'll wipe my face. No, I'm not going to do that. I like missing questions, though. Is it it's good? nice. This is my dinner. All right, are there any more questions? We, uh, no, I think, I, think, I think that's it. Well, Antonio, thank you so much. Great job. Um, our plates aren't completely clean. I think we did fairly well. We did. Um, 
uh, thank you so much for being on the show with us, Antonio. Um, and uh, Antonio Marshall, everyone, right? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, make sure to stick around because we have Molly Peary, uh, who will be here to discuss her upcoming show, Little Women. We will be right back. All right, welcome back. Our next guest is a senior here at Olivet, as well as being a very, very talented lady. Molly writes, she acts, she sings, she dances, and she has done so much more. But lately she has been wearing the director hat. Here to talk about her upcoming show, Little Women, performed and produced by members of the ONU theater community, please welcome my friend, Molly Peary. Hi Molly, it's so good to have you here. I'm glad you're here. Oh man, so ONU Theater's been a big part of your time here at Alabama, right? You've been in a lot of shows, I think that's a fair thing to say. But what is it like now being off stage, behind the curtain, mm -hmm. doing the creative side? What's that been like for you? Oh, so scary. Oh yeah? Uh, yeah, I remember when I first got the uh, kind of uh, pitch or idea to direct and I was like, oh, this will be so easy and I think it's been anything but. Um, and I think it's like scary, but it's like so cool because you're being introduced to so many different mediums. So from an acting standpoint um, and from a directing standpoint, they're two completely different things and that's refreshing. And so I'm just humbled by the opportunity. Yeah. That's so cool. I, I love hearing that. Um, and so the show that you've selected is Little Women. Yeah. Why, why Little Women? Oh, why Little Women? That's a loaded question. I um, love media, movies, plays that um, portray women's stories. I mean, I yeah. am a woman. So um, that obviously plays a big toll. I um, love Joe's um, journey. I think that her journey within the show and the play is... Um, so inspiring to me as a writer, as an artist, as a woman, um, as a director, as just as like a multimedia storyteller in general, it's inspiring and it's, it's heartwarming and I just think all of that needs to hear it. That's fantastic. Yeah. I, that, I love that you're so drawn to this yeah. and inspired and ins inspiration that's led to passion. Um, and speaking of, of inspiration, where does your where does your inspiration come from? Where do you, what drives you? Sure, sure. Um, <laughs> that is also a loaded question. I um, feel like it's a collaborative experience. I mean, mm. I can't do anything that I do without the Lord, um, but um, you know, also just like my friends and my family. I think I, I'm an external processor, so I like to talk and I like to um, chat, and I think that it's been the most wonderful experience because of the friends and family who have let me just like word vomit for like 20 minutes about like the color of the parchment that was gonna be on the stage. Like it's just like refreshing because I wouldn't have created all these experiences, these sets designs and all these things if it wasn't for the people around me and the other creators. Um, I'm a film studies concentration here at Olivet. And so I'm consistently, consistently surrounded by people who are so good at what they do. Um, and so it's like, I feel safe knowing that there are people around me that know what they're doing and know their craft and like know theater and know media and know all these things. And I think that that all kind of culminates into like directing. That's incredible. So as you've been formed by the people around you into the director that you are, what is there a directing style that you've arrived at? Is there is there an approach that you have that you could describe for us? Oh. Uh, I am such a new director. Like I am baby. I am like baby baby. I, I have no like I've not like found myself or done anything crazy. Um but I do, again, like to be collaborative. Um, I like to, I was literally just talking about this with my actors like a couple weeks ago. And I was like, I'm a, I love to be creative and collaborative, but if my actors aren't mentally healthy, then that's an issue. So I think one yeah. of the biggest things that I've been stressing is mental health within my cast, because then that will just take us that extra mile of excellence. Oh, and absolutely. so I don't know if that's necessarily the answer to your question, but I just think. No, it, it's, it's a great answer, because it may not be a directing style, and I completely understand. I mean, 
we're still students in college. You're right. still you're still being formed as you go through this. Yeah. But that's definitely an approach that I think really really matters. Yeah. Is when people are healthy and and working together, mm -hmm. um, they're able to produce something so much greater than if it was just themselves. Yeah. Uh, so that's so so cool. All right. So Little Women. The production, it's coming up soon, right? Yes. Yeah, no, it's really coming up soon. So could you give us a little bit of a, I don't know, maybe a preview, or could you tell us a little bit about the show? Yes. What oh. we can expect? Yes, so um, this show is different, in which it's show, um, shown through a subjective bias of Joe March. So we actually don't see a large majority of the other half of the book. We see Joe growing up with her family, um, and her father going away from the war. So everything is kind of seen through her perspective. Mm. Um, it's going to be done in a black box theater, which is an intimate experience. You're gonna get a really um, like close experience with the actors, um, as well as it's being debuted in our new black box theater, which is- That is, is exciting. Beautiful, it's so beautiful. And Professor Sarver has been working tirelessly on it. So it's that's, just been super cool. That's so cool, I'm so excited for you. Well, Molly, thank you so much yeah. for sitting down with me and talking about your creative process and all that that entails. You can see Little Women November 18th, 19th, and 20th in Sims uh, Center for Theater. I hope I will see you there because I know that I am super excited to be able to see it. Molly, thank you so much again for being here with us. And thank you to Antonio as well for being here. This has been a great show. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I am Adam Keller, and good night from tonight at Olivet.